Hello everybody. Today I am angry. I'm a bit angry and and rightly so. Let us talk about it. I want to say this. The tournament, under 17 tournament in Rwanda has been concluded. Who won the under 17 Sekafa tournament? Uganda. I'm sure you know this and I'm sure you know that Uganda now in terms of football within East Africa is not a country to joke with. Think about this. Uganda under 20 is heading to AFCON. Uganda under 17 is heading to AFCON. What is it they are doing that is right? Now think about this as well. Kenya under 17. This was our time. If things were to happen, it was this time round. Why? Because the under 17 that FKF took to Rwanda is the team yeah, that has been living, staying, studying, eating and sleeping in FKF Center of Excellence in a place called Dome in Nairobi. And the cost for this Center of Excellence per year is 29 million shillings. So the boys that you have seen playing for, for Kenya under 17 in Rwanda, they have actually been living in, in a house in Nairobi, homeschooled there and training in Nairobi yeah, for the last few years. But the result is like you saw in Rwanda that our first game was against Ethiopia and we drew 2-2 with Ethiopia. Our next game was against Uganda and Uganda uh, beat us. Yeah, Uganda beat the Kenyan team 5-0. That was a shocker. Now, that was the end of the journey for our under-17 team. Now, Uganda progressed to the, to, to the semi-final. And then, now, Uganda, as we know, it has won the under-17 tournament. It played against Tanzania. And the final, the result at the final were Uganda 3, Tanzania 1. But remember this, Ethiopia ha actually reached the semi the semi-final and even better yeah ethiopia lost uh, at the penalt at the penalty stage so they reached the semi-final now what i want to say is this and i want to share with you and so that you can also understand why i am angry uganda yeah this 2020 final yeah it was it was uganda against tanzania 2018 Ethiopia yeah Ethiopia versus Tanzania yeah 2017 yeah which was played just at the beginning of 2018 Somalia got to the final yeah so if Somalia can get to the final of the Sekafa Cup yeah Kenya has never reached even yeah, third place. But Ethiopia, no, but Somalia has managed to reach the final of Sekafa Cup in the last three years. And I go back to what I'm saying. This team under 17 that Kenya had, if we if this team could not take us anywhere, we are doomed. And this center of excellence in Thome spending 29 million per year. Hmm? Say the waste of time or a scandal. Because we know. Just a week before going to Rwanda, FKF was scouting youths around villages in Kenya. So how can you pick a youth from a village in Kenya? And then a week later, take them to an international tournament in Rwanda and expect them to do well there. Because professionalism is important. Chemistry of the team is important. Um, being coached professionally is important. So when you pick boys in villages a week before the tournament, what does that mean for the group that we have been told that they have been studying and living in Thome in Nairobi Center of Excellence for the last few years? That means that that project is not working and now FKF has gone to scouting back in the villages despite the money that has been lost through that program. And again, those boys who are in Thome, there are so many complaints that they are all from around Nairobi. That is not a Kenyan team. What I saw in Rwanda, Kenya under 17, those are not. 
the Kenyan talents, I'm telling you. There are talents in Kenya, but the system is not reaching them. They are not being given a chance. And the people who are in this center of excellence in Nairobi, I have now come to believe they have connections as why they are there. And most of them are in the academies of connected people in Nairobi. That is not what I would call under-17 national team, what I saw in Rwanda. That team was terrible. But I cannot blame the boys once again. It is a federation. It is the system of nurturing youth. It is the system of scouting. It is a system of giving chance that is wrong. So those who are getting chance, they are not the right talents. And if they are, they are not being coached well. Now, I want to ask you this. That team, yeah, Uganda 5, Kenya nil. When, we, when our team conceded at least three goals, or even four, at that point, I believe the coaches should have done something and now go defensively. Because we are conceding too much, something is wrong. 5 nil is a lot of goals in an international tournament. That speaks, yeah, speaks volume. Therefore, I expected at least our... You know, our defense, yeah, our defensive unit, at least to improve, concede one goal, two goals. But when you go past three and you're not and you're not scoring, something is wrong. That defensive unit, the way I saw it, it is all over the place. At, at two goals that were conceded, yeah, there was only one defender left. Another goal, there was only two defenders left. Yeah, the defensive unit of four was was all over the place the team uh, the, the the defensive unit is not working together yeah because you cannot defend without the without the back four yeah working together as a unit all the time all the time communicating and making sure that when a leader lango sawa sawa yeah it is okay to go forward it is okay to press forward but i'm telling you the, what i saw there that does not look like a team that has been working together for the last three years. So what it tells you is this. Most of the boys are, some um, some of the boys were from that center. Others were from villages in Kenya. So there was no chemistry and they cannot play together. And that just, that tells a lot about the failed system of FKF in terms of nurturing the youth. Now, in, 20, in 2017, we had this team under 17 now when it was under 14 they went to southampton for a tournament and we were told they did very well there they played the likes of chelsea and so on and so on these are jokes from fkf i don't believe anything fkf say that team i saw there in in rwanda that cannot even beat ethiopia and you're telling us they played the likes of the likes of chelsea and so on now in 2019 again they went to spain we were told they went to the international um Mediterranean International Tournament. Yeah, last year it was the under under 16 team. Again, we were told that they are going there to play the likes of Real Madrid, the likes of Barcelona. These are all stories from FKA. But you you saw that team. Is that a team that you can expect to play Barcelona or to play Real Madrid? There might be local village teams in Barcelona called Barcelona FC, but the Barcelona that I know. The Barcelona Academy could not play that team. That is a joke. Neither is Real Madrid uh, Academy team. They could not play that team. Or Man United or Liverpool. We've, be, we've been told all of them, the likes of them playing. Now, I've done my research in regard to this international tournament in Spain. Yeah? And this tournament, it is called international because it is for teams coming from many other places. Yeah? But the, the teams that go there, they are not countries. They are just teams from clubs. Kenya, as a country, we take a national team and as, we took a national team under 16 there, which is now under 17. But let me tell you, from my research, I have found out that this team in Spain, it actually played against the school teams in Spain. It is not this team we are being told, big, big, big teams. Otherwise, this team would be better. It would have learned a lot. They played a school team. And another team that they played, is from, a, is from a club, from a local village club from North America. That is the club they played in Spain and a school team in Spain. If I'm wrong, let FKF come out and give us the list of the teams that this under-16 team played in Spain last year. FKF, that's your homework. Give those names to people and prove me wrong if we did not play, if we did not play a village team from, from North America and a school team 
from Spain. My fellow Kenyans, the time for action is coming. We must deal with FKF the way we are supposed to. Otherwise, change will never come in our Kenyan football. The battle, the battle, the war, again, I will say it again. The war is us against them. And I will define this for you. Them is those FKF and the people around them who are resisting change. And we keep getting humiliated by every country, Eritrea, Somalia, Comoros, Djibouti, you call it. The country around us, they are all developing football very, very fast. And very soon, we will be, Kenya will become the laughing stock. No country that Kenya will be able to beat around, that, around the region. You look at our teams and you will understand what I'm saying. This will not change. Because FKF now has shifted focus. They are now just fighting with Kenyan Premier League and fighting about money. They have forgotten our primary, their primary objective of developing football in the country and developing youth teams and making sure our football is growing properly and is being developed properly. This war with the, with the uh, KPL, it is going to kill Kenyan football forever. And I'm telling KPL, the damage that... They are going to experience as a result of working with FKF. It is going to take over 20 years to repair. My fellow Kenyans, let us keep talking. Let us keep sharing. Let us keep educating each other. Let us keep preaching the right gospel for our Kenyan football. Yeah? We are not going to relent until the revolution has happened and until Kenyan football is put on the right track. Aluta continua. I live in peace. I'm gone.